Hello, I'm John Shepherd, and in this short video, we're going to take a look at the type of training that you can be doing as the indoor season approaches. The indoor season acts as a key transitory point in the training year. It gives you an indication of how well your training is going and where you're going to be in the summer. Consequently, it's important not to peak unnecessarily in the indoor season, but to continue with sufficient training so that you'll have enough gas in the tank for the outdoor season. One of the most crucial aspects of the long and triple jumper is board accuracy. And coming into the indoor season, we will do lots and lots of run-ups. We'll often start with run-ups on the track and progress then down to the actual pit. I stress initially when using the track, it's all about the rhythm, the continued acceleration and speed through the board. Accuracy can be worked on later. To develop the required rhythm, we also break the run-up down into its three constituent phases. At the pit, we then make sure that an effective takeoff is made from the full run-up. It's important to set the takeoff up in order to maximise transference into the takeoff. I'll often place a marker for the penultimate step. This is around two metres off of the front edge of the board and it's where the jumper should place their foot flat. This will set up the takeoff. Heel needs to be dropped slightly onto the floor on that penultimate step. Doing this will push the hips at greater velocity through into the takeoff. Actual jump technique is obviously another vital aspect of training at this time. Regular followers of my channel will know that we never really stop technique work. Literally from the second week back in training we will be doing takeoff drills and preparatory work. This means that it's so much easier to jump effectively when we actually start jumping at the pit. And something else which is crucial at this time of the year is to make sure that you're jumping off of a relatively long run-up. This will enable you to take off out of speed. This obviously applies to both the long jump and the triple jump. I try to progress the training in such a way that it's virtually a seamless progression from training into competition. You don't want to be in a scenario whereby you don't have sufficient speed and crucially sufficient takeoff reactivity in which to convert. Thus, if all the preparatory training has included elements that test the athlete to near maximum, then when it comes to actual jumping, there should not be a great mismatch. Speed and power production is thus crucial and at this time of the year it needs to be turned to maximum. Again, as with the technical work, we haven't just started speed work. We've been sprinting again literally since week one in training. Thus we keep building speed on speed on speed. What is different, however, at this time, is the fact that we do competitive sprints. When the athletes run against each other, they're likely to put in more effort. So it's important to make sure that they are ready to run at this type of velocity. As well as programming sessions to reach this ability, I think that having the free lap system and being able to time objectively runs has helped. This is because the athletes will put 100% effort in to achieving faster times. So what about other conditioning? How do you make sure that you maintain your power in particular during the indoor season? Again, regular viewers of the channel will know that I'm very big on the use of plyometrics and that I use these to peak the athlete. Do check out the advanced plyometrics video for more on that in particular. Having said that, however, 
you're watching some of the sharp end flyer metrics that I use particularly for the triple jumpers in order to get them really competition ready. Do note that we carefully progress to being able to do these flyer metrics. We don't just fling them into the training session. Another thing that we continue to do is the background work, the stability work, the core work that will hopefully minimize the potential for injury. We continue to do lots of drills in this respect too and of course the drills will help technical aspects. So what about weight training? Well, we continue to do that during the indoor season. It's crucial to maintain your power. Now, what we do do is reduce some of the volume but maintain the intensity and we also change some of the lifts and I'll talk more about that in a subsequent video. Just to say we still maintain the triphasic methodology. We also tend to maintain the complex contrast nature of the weight sessions whereby we'll always include some plyometrics after or within the weight training session to maximize muscle fiber, fast twitch muscle fiber recruitment. What I as coach have to ensure is that the athletes are not getting overly tired, that's physically and in terms of their neural system. Therefore, we will do lesser contacts, for example, and lesser sprints, lesser number of sprints, and I'll be watching for any drop-offs. Basically, at this time of the year, you need to make sure that you're 100% ready. And if you're training sub-maximally in a session that requires maximal output, then you're not going to get the results that you need. If you think about it, what is an extra repetition or two performed at sub-maximal levels going to achieve when you're looking for 100% explosiveness, for example? And this becomes even more crucial when you start competing. Competitions take more out of you. Therefore, you need to be rested and really ready to compete and crucially recovered from the training and from the competitions in order to maximize your performance. Another thing you need to account for at this time of the training year is the number of competitions you are going to do. You and your coach need to have planned when these will be and also to have thought about how these are going to affect and dovetail into your preparations for the outdoor season. Hopefully the information provided in this video will help with your transition and progress through the indoor season. Also, I want to recommend you listen to another video on the channel from a young man called Jordan Harry. While as being a triple jumper, Jordan educates on how to learn better, get better memory and how to speed read. And in the video that we produce together, he talks about how this can benefit your athletic performance. So do go and check out the video and in the meantime, Here's the trailer for it. It takes the whole process of memory out of the equation. No. Hello, I'm John Shepherd, and in this slightly different type of video, I'm going to be talking to Jordan Harry, who's a triple jumper, and he's also an expert at teaching speed reading and ways to improve your memory. I'm the CEO of Study Fast, where I teach people to read faster and remember more. By reading more about your event, you improve, it's that simple. So I encourage you to embrace your multi-dimensionality in the sense of you're not just an athlete and it's all about consistent, effective repetition. So by starting a tiny habit like that, you'll see large improvements. And if you've stuck to the video to the end, good luck with your training and competition and do subscribe to the channel.